About 130 miles southeast of Birmingham, we turn onto a narrow road shaded by live oaks, leading to the Sea Hoy Plantation deep in the heart of Bullock County, Alabama. We have come in search of the red cockaded woodpecker. Follow the wildlife biologists into the field in search of the red cockaded woodpeckers to band. As we look round, we notice there are large, clear, park like open spaces within the forest. It turns out that this is vital habitat to the quail. And in the early years of the Sihoi plantation, when quail began to decline, it was up to the biologists to solve this complex ecological puzzle. They knew that quail could survive only in forests with open spaces. Coincidentally, this was the exact habitat in which red cockaded woodpeckers would survive. They then fitted another clue together, which is that in normal longleaf forests, there are natural burns, natural fires that keep these open spaces between the trees. So the biologist instituted a program of prescribed burns about every two years. This brought the quail population back and also opened the way for the red cockaded woodpecker's habitat. a sharp and practiced eye to spot the red cockaded woodpecker and it also takes patience before the bird is ready to roost in the nest. These nests have been placed here by the biologists and are artificial nests because the red cockaded woodpecker takes several years to pick out a nest and in order to save this colony we needed to install artificial nests. The story of the red cockaded woodpecker is one of inspiration and success because this woodpecker was listed on the Federal Endangered Species list. But with the cooperation of the US Fish and Wildlife Service, private landowners and conservationists, it was saved from the brink of extinction. Once the red cockaded woodpecker has safely nested for the night, it does not exit until daylight. The question then becomes how to get the bird out of the nest. 
Usually this is done successfully when the biologist scratches on the tree with a stick or a stone. The bird then will come out of the nest to inspect the cause of the disturbance, which happened in this case. got the bird and uh, it is a male I think we've suspected it. and we're gonna we, I can see the cockades sitting there. Well, we're gonna kind of quickly we're gonna go ahead and get it color banded and release it so it can get back to the how quickly they you let them go and they just go land on a tree 20 feet away they don't you think you hightail it out of here so this one uh, the cluster colors are orange light green orange so I'm gonna have two orange bands on one leg with a light green band in the middle So we've got the color combination on the right leg is aluminum over light green. I'm sorry, orange over light green over orange on the right. And that's the cluster combination. So all the birds banded in this cluster will have that combination. And then on the left leg, it's got the aluminum numbered band, the Fish and Wildlife Service numbered band over the dark blue. And that's the individual color to identify this bird as different from all the other birds that get banded within this cluster. And here you can see the cockade, very, very slight, just a few feathers on either side of only the male's head. So they're flying around. You can only see that when they're in your hand. So if you can see the red, that's usually not a sign. It's not a red cockaded woodpecker that you're seeing. So we'll just release them on a tree. The 
success story of the red cockaded woodpecker is what I want to tell in my next eco mystery, the return of the red cockaded clan.